Shalom and welcome back. This is my second video in which um, I'm going to go in more detail on to one of the passages I spoke about in the first video. And in this one, which is pointing to the fact that we live in a sphere and we don't live on a flat earth, um, this I want to detail because I, I spoke in detail the first time about one of the now constructs, but here I didn't actually do that, and I wanted to make sure I did this correctly here, so that um, it's better understood what's going on here. Okay, so Chok, Chag, Chok, I said, means a bound or a limit, okay? Um, it's where we get the word ruling or edict, and Chag, I said before, comes from the verb hog, and hog means to encircle or to circle, okay, or to make a circle. So um, this here is a, a participle, so it's acting like a noun, okay. So um, the hog hog. Remember when I said in the earlier video that the issue that we have to remember with uh, noun constructs, noun constructs always work in this fashion. And that's where we have to take the noun ets and pre and remember the pre acts like the uh, it's the describing noun, okay? So here this is the word tree and this is the word fruit. And so the tree of fruit which is a fruit tree. So it's a specific type of tree. Just like the hook Chag, the bound or limit is a circular bound. So it's a circular bound by which in this it describes the attitude that al pnei hamayim or al pnei ma'im upon the surface of the water has been made into a circuit or bound. Remember the word hook uh, doesn't, it's not something tangible, it's not a tangible thing. Um, so it's, it's expressing that we see in Hebrew that uh, we have a sphere, that literally the water has been forced into this circular limit, this specific circular state, okay? And this is important because I don't want to be misunderstood because when you go back to the first video, you'll understand um, what I was talking about here. Uh, the second thing I want to do is, I want to go and point how in the Torah, how we learn uh, that the earth is actually, if we take the scripture for what we are supposed to, um, the earth is actually is stationary. And uh, this is here in this passage, I'm not going to write God's name, that we don't do that. So. I'm just going to finish the rest of the uh, sentence here. And uh, here, sorry, trying to do these vowelizations as quick as I can. Vayamer um, Elohim, and God said, let the waters be gathered. And here this word yikvu comes from the verb, or I should say comes from the root, excuse me, kava. And kava uh, literally means to gather strongly together. And I want to explain so you can understand this. Um, we have different verbs, uh, different words, words, not verbs. We have different words that come from kava. Kav, which is a chord. Um, we have the word tikva. Which is the word for hope. And uh, we also have the word mikvah, and this is how Hebrew works. Hebrew is a very conceptual language, and the way Hebrew functions is 
your root is the heart of the meaning of the word. Um, the difference between English and Hebrew is you have to understand that Hebrew likes to understand the function of something. It doesn't label things. Like, English loves to label things, okay? And then we like to define what that labeling is later. Where Hebrew likes to tell us what the function is, and then immediately we can understand what it's really doing. So, if you understand kav, kav means to gather strongly together, okay? So what is a kav? Well, we call it a chord in English, but in Hebrew, what is the function of it? The function is taking strands and gathering them tightly together, which creates this chord. Tikva. Tikva is the concept of gathering together all the things you know and, 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 and know to be true, and you hold on to it, and we call that in English, hope. You see, Hebrew likes to say what's the function, English likes to just kind of label things, okay? But this is how we can see why this is the way it is. Here, the word mikvah. The word mikvah in Hebrew is um, literally, it's a physical object that is made. It's a man-made object that's put into the ground by which you can store water in, okay? And so this mikvah is a strong gathering of water. Okay? A strong gathering of water. And this, you begin to understand why these different things are always connected to the root. Root is always paramount. And that's why in translation you can't actually take just a simple word as like gathering, let the waters be gathered and you don't even know what the meaning of it is because you don't know what the root of this word is referring to and this is why when learning in Hebrew we understand the heart of what's going and later we find the Torah says in the passage El Makom Echad. Let me try this a little closer. Echad. There we go. Unto Makom is a place and one. So literally, we take this, this is once again the noun construct, Makom Echad. And we say the place is one, so we translate it one place. This is how we put it. Okay? So we find from the Torah, the Torah teaches us that this water was strongly bound together and it was put into a fixed position. And so this is where we get from the Torah where we understand that the world actually doesn't move. The earth doesn't actually physically rotate or do any kind of rotating whatsoever. The Bible tells us the earth is in a fixed position. And uh, matter of fact, what is important to understand is the fact that uh, there are things that move. And the things that move, the Bible tells us later, and I'm going to point this out, is the Bible tells us that God made two two luminaries, okay, he says he, says he made two great ma'orot um, gadolim, um, he made two great luminaries, echad uh, de'memshelet hayom, one to govern the day, v'echad le'memshelet halala, one to govern the night, and one was called the Mor HaGadol, the great luminary, one was called the Mor HaKaton, and the Katon, the one that governs the night, it says, et Chochavim, et chochavim, and the stars. So I'm going to show here et chochavim, chavim, right? Chochavim and ha chochavim. Okay, et chochavim. So what is chochavim? You see it in your Bible. It will say the word stars. 
right? But this is uh, something that we need to kind of explain here because in Hebrew, the word chokhav literally means the root. Remember, I told you about the root means to orbit. The root word means to orbit. So the things that orbit, the Torah is telling us that literally it's the stars that orbit around us. This is where we understand from the Torah that we are living in a geocentric uh, world where the, the, the world stays still and the stars, they orbit. And uh, if, you, if you have any questions, if you want to look this up, uh, you can go grab a book, um, there's a book by the name of Hirsch and uh, he does a whole thing of roots and uh, you can look at his root book, you can uh, grab other root dictionaries that are out there and you have to understand that this is just how like very important these words they take a different meaning because what is a Chochav? The word, the word Chochav means to orbit, so what are the Chochavim? There are those things which orbit, which rotate. That's literally what the Torah is telling us here. So we call them stars, but in Hebrew we're talking about the function because remember everything's based upon the function. I see these things and what they do, they do this. They move, they orbit. Okay, and so therefore in Hebrew we call it Chochav because it orbits. So I hope this helps encourage you. I, I'm going to give you uh, uh, more videos uh, to talk about this subject here and to pinpoint these areas. Um, some of the major erroneous things you find from people that try to quote scripture to prove different things but uh, we have to get to them. Uh, for example, uh, one passage which deals with the four corners of the earth, we'll do that in the next video, um, in order to understand why it all points back to really the, the spherical earth. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, my desire is to encourage you and uh, not to at all in any way, shape, or form um, be in any way that's rude. I, I want to be very uh, encouraging. I looked into these things myself, okay? These were questions that I asked and questions that I looked at and it seems to be very popular that people are looking into this thing and uh, I want to help bring about some hopefully balance and encouragement because you know, the scripture, this is the stuff that makes everything worthwhile. And uh, if you want to know the passages that I quoted from here, um, the first part here that I did earlier um, was in Bereshit, which is Genesis 1, chapter 8. Sorry, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 8. And uh, the part with the Chochav, um, this is verse uh, 16. And I have to see it's in Hebrew, so I have to kind of put the Gematria back. So, um, But uh, this is why it's important for us to understand how this actually works and to realize how roots work. You know, because a lot of people, they'll pick up a Bible or some kind of dictionary and they'll say, Oh, this is what it means, and they don't really understand how roots work. And I want to encourage you how roots work so you can understand the roots are always based upon this function action how the thing functions and how it acts and from that that's where we get the words meaning that's where we define what the word is I'll see you next time